Well, hello y'all. This is Jenny Gallagher with Joyful Heart House Calls and Keto Nurses. Many of you are familiar with my um, social media presence um, for different reasons, but today we're going to talk about some updates to the mask pattern I released in late March. Since late March, I have participated in a volunteer group called Nebraska's Hands and Feet, and we've made over 65,000 masks for people all around the country. It started out being a, um, a way to help nurses and other healthcare professionals who were running short of personal protective equipment, or PPE. It quickly spread to helping anyone who needed a mask because businesses were um, closing or minimizing workers. And so to be able to stay open, many employers either required or requested masks of their employees. Um, a lot of um, uh, individuals to be comfortable shopping decided to wear masks out. The CDC made a recommendation that we wear a face covering of some sort. So very rapidly, our mission changed from providing masks to only healthcare workers to almost anyone that asks. We then had uh, the development of um, a gown girls team because we had requests for isolation gowns so that nurses and other workers could garb completely covering their head, scrub caps, and their face um, with masks and then a, a gown that could be washed because disposable gowns were no longer um, being easily available. So we've covered a wide variety of purposes and uses for our PPE that we've been making in our sewing rooms all across the country. Um, but we have found um, a few things out over the last few weeks. And so some of that feedback I'm going to give you today. One is that <clears throat> when we originally made our mask, it contained a pocket on the back side so that you could put a filter inside in case you needed it. Healthcare workers are being asked to use a mask with a filter when they have to use cloth masks. That mask with a pocket filter requires three pieces of fabric and is the um, original pattern I I didn't create it, I, I copied it from somewhere else, but it's the one I published and, and made available for our group to use. Many people are using it or something similar, um, but as the requests have gone more toward the general public, there's less of a need for that pocket. And so this video, we're gonna talk about how to adapt that pattern and how to make a pocket, um, a pocket free mask so that it's just two layers of fabric. And here's an example of one. So this is two layers of fabric. There's one on the front and one on the back. We do want two different colored fabrics, two different types of fabrics so that the front is easily distinguished from the back. When patients wear these in facilities or even in homes, if a nurse or another healthcare professional needs to remove the mask, then they need to be able to easily identify where was the what was the part touching the face and what part was exposed to air. You would not want to accidentally put it back on this way if this was the front facing out because of the germs that would be inhaled. So it's important to know the front from the back. Um, no matter what style of mask you're making, always make your front different from the back. One of the other things we found real quick is that elastic was damaging the skin. Um, the ear skin and the skin on the scalp right next to the ear is pretty tender. It's a very thin skin <clears throat> and a lot of um, nurses and other healthcare professionals that were having to wear the elastic looped um, for hours at a time were reporting skin breakdown and sores and lesions. So that's not helpful that allows for germs to get into that wound. So um, many people started using t-shirt yarn and yes, t-shirt yarn is a thing. You can actually buy t-shirt yarn. We, most of us were just cutting up t-shirts into three quarter to one inch strips. Then came along the development of a 
a slip knot kind of thing where you could actually adjust that t-shirt yarn over your ear. There are several videos out there. We have one in our um, group, Nebraska's Hands and Feet, that show how to do that. Um, then came along uh, pony beads. And so people are using t-shirt yarn and they're inserting it through a small tiny bead and you can adjust that um, around the ear so it's much more adjustable and um, helpful for folks. So there's lots of different options that have come up and whatever works in your world, whatever supplies you have accessible or can locate um, is perfectly acceptable. But today our focus is going to be on learning to make a mask with a solid back. So you have two different pieces of fabric. So let's get started. All right, so you'll see here we have some pattern pieces. This is the original pattern that I made. It consisted of the front of a mask, cut seven and a half by nine and a half, and two of these cut five by seven, so that this piece would be sewn here and this piece would be sewn here. And with a casing or hem, over those two free edges, you would form a pocket on the back. However, um, a couple of other things we've noticed is that some of our fabrics are shrinking. Some of our face sizes are larger than others and smaller than others. So I've actually increased the size of the regular adult mask to an eight by 10. If you want, if you are already using these from the original pattern and you want to continue using these, but you want to make a one piece back, then the measurement you would use is seven and a half by six and a half. You'd cut one piece and we'll sew along here, we'll sew along here and then turn it as you'll see shortly. But if you're already using this and you already have some of the one larger fronts cut, you can cut um, seven and a half by six and a half and use it for your back piece. Um, it, the assembly goes together very similar to the original pattern. So this is the new pattern that I'm using. I am now cutting eight by 10. It's slightly larger. It's a half inch larger all the way around. If I have someone requesting a mask with a beard or um, larger face, um, then I would add a half to one inch to be able to make this a little bit larger. But you just cut one eight by 10 piece and then you cut one about six and a half by eight. So you have them the same height, but you have this trimmed off of each side to reduce the thickness once you've pleated and folded over for the casings, okay? So it goes together like this. Here are our two pieces of fabric. We have right sides together. And I've laid the back piece of fabric over the front, evenly leaving the edges. I've run one seam across the top and one seam across the bottom. I'm going to turn this. Sometimes it's easier to iron it just a little bit before you turn it. And you can do that if you want. But I turn it and then I iron this down. Iron, 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 iron. I turn this around and do the same thing with this seam. And I iron all of this down. Once you have this ironed, you can turn it right side over and we can put our pleats in. I pleat one, one at a time. I fold over and up and I iron. I press, 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 and I iron, iron, iron. I get this where it won't budge. I literally iron, iron, iron. 
one pleat at a time. So then I have distinct edges and I can feel them. So then I fold my second pleat in. So one thing that you can do is when you're feeling right here, let me get this where y'all can see it good. So this is the end of the first pleat, but it bumps up against the next pleat so that none of the layers of a pleat overlap. This is the hardest part for most people to figure out. But if it's over even just a tiny bit, by the time you get to sewing these edges and your casing down on the sides, you wind up with way too many layers and lots of broken needles and terrible frustration. So you wanna be very careful to make sure your pleats, no part of your pleat ever overlaps the other part, okay? So then we're gonna iron, 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 iron. Press and steam all of that into place. And then you're gonna pick up and do that again. Sometimes the third one, I actually stand up like this. So I can make sure it's not overlapping. And I press it down, I make sure my thin fabric is between the two pleats. And I iron, 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 iron. Pressing hard steaming, whatever you got to do to make sure none of these come undone. It's not just a quick run over with your iron. This is a, a massive ironing here, okay? Once they're ironed, in the previous pattern, we did run a row of stitching across both ends, and then we fold it in. But if ironed well, you can skip that step. It's not going to look pretty because I did not iron well. I just hand press these. But if you iron well, this will easily fold over, matching your raw edges to your raw edges. These should not overlap. Okay? That's another big mistake that a lot of sewing volunteers are making is when they fold this over, they carry this seam allowance way too far. This should only be about a half inch, give or take. But the raw edge of your pleated part should match up to the raw edge of the back of your fabric. Then fold it over again and run your row of stitching down. Once you have it all ironed and pleated, it'll look like this, okay? This one is already ironed and pleated. So we just took and did the same way. We laid each pleat in and ironed it flat, one at a time. And then I flipped it over on the ironing board and I ironed one part over and another part over. Flip the end, fold the seam allowance in, fold the seam allowance in, and then pressed again so that now all of this is just ready to go back on the machine. This is a lot of time saving for those of you that have been making masks an another way. This makes it a lot easier. You're spending a lot more time at the iron, I think, but I iron when I'm tired and not able to do much else. So I sit down and iron. Now, another thing that has come up is the length of elastic and how to make these attach. So, in addition to using elastic that comes through this casing on the side, let me get this where y'all can see this. In the original pattern, elastic went through here and formed an ear loop. It was about a 10 inch length of elastic and we used our bodkin or loop turner to run the elastic through the casing and then we stitched it in one corner to secure it. This is the way I'm making masks now. No matter whether they need a pocket or not, I'm using a different kind of elastic attachment method. As you can see, with this mask, the top of the mask has one piece of elastic that goes all the way around the back of the head. So this part would sit on the nose and this would be fastened or 
um, laying on the back of your head. So it goes around your head, not around your ears, okay? This piece of elastic is 14 inches. When I first started experimenting, I liked the way the 13 inch fit. The longer I have to wear the 13 inch piece of elastic though, the more uncomfortable it gets. So Kathy Black and I have been doing a few experiments um, going back and forth with elastic sizes. This one is 14 and this elastic is a little bit looser than the standard black elastic or white elastic. This gives a little bit easier. So the 14 in this type of elastic, I like just fine. But with the black elastic or the white elastic, standard elastic, I find that 15 inches gives me a better comfort level, especially if I have to wear it for very long. So I'm gonna show you how this goes on, okay? All right, so we're gonna put on this mask with the black elastic, it's 14, uh, 15 inches across the top and about 10 to 11 inches across the bottom. So the black elastic can be put all the way up top for a tighter, snugger fit or it can come down over the ears, down a little bit, and that loosens it just a little bit to make it a little bit more comfortable, okay? My husband likes the 15 inch elastic much better. So if you're making masks for a, a bigger guy, um, you may want to even experiment with a 16 inch length of, length of elastic across the top. But anyway, I hope these tips are helpful and um, useful. Um, when people ask you, lay people ask you about what to use for a filter, I typically don't recommend filters for the lay people. Like just for average citizens, there's no purpose. If they insist, the best filter is just another layer of Quilt it, um, quilting cotton, just another layer. Make it three layers instead of two. But keep in mind, everything you add makes it thicker and harder to stitch on the sides, okay? So I hope these tips are helpful. And if you have questions, find us in Nebraska's Hands and Feet and we'll help fix you up. Thanks for all of you making masks and sewing. I appreciate every single stitch and um, good luck.